it's something that God has laid on my heart is to truly talk about the picture that God has for His church. The first week we started off speaking about just rowing in rhythm, that we're all together on this boat, and we're all together following the voice of Jesus, and we've all got to row, but we've got to row in the rhythm as a church together. The church that Jesus dreams of is also a church that fishes for men. And then the second week we spoke about the fact that we, in Jesus' time, fishermen didn't fish by themselves. It wasn't, they had nets and people had to fish together. And it's all together as we row together and as we fish together that we become the dream church that he wants us to be. Last week, we spoke about foundations. And last week, I really just shared from my heart what God has laid on my heart when it comes to foundations. And that is also in a big way where the initiative comes from with the Alpha course as well, is that God really wants us to build a strong foundation in our lives. Today, I want to say that a dream church is a church that follows. Jesus says we should follow Him. We should walk behind Him and we should follow Him all the way. But again, God has laid something on my heart that I want to share today. And I want to start off in a completely different way when I share about this part of following Jesus. I want to start off by actually asking you a very different question and I'll connect it now. I want to ask you, have you ever lost anything? Maybe your car keys, maybe your car. Maybe some of you, praise the Lord, has lost some weight, okay? Have you ever lost anything? I remember there was a day, and maybe it's the same with you, there was a day when I lost my wedding ring. But I've got a, a great wife. She wasn't upset about it. And, and it was lost for a whole day. And then she picked it up again. And you know, in those moments, it is a little bit stressful when you know you've lost something. Some of us has got a lot of sentimental value to things that we lo lose. But then I think, you know, even if there's some sentimental value to something that you lose, Nothing can compare when, to the moment when you lose a relationship or when you lose someone. A little bit more than a year ago, we were somewhere with my mom and dad and we were in the shop and my dad was standing outside and Benay was just over three years old. And in the next moment... In the next moment, she was gone. And Vinette and myself rushed outside and we saw her walking with another man holding his hand. And we got there and realized that she thought it was her grandfather and just decided to grab this man's hand and walk to them. It was about three seconds, maybe five seconds. But I can tell you for sure that those five seconds were worse than the whole day that I lost my ring. Those few moments were really, really, really touching. It was scary. And I realized that when you lose some form of a relationship, it, it impacts your life so much more than just losing stuff, even sentimental stuff. And if I speak about following Jesus, I actually want to say, what do you do in those moments when you lose Jesus? You might say, Harry, well, we don't lose Jesus. Jesus is everywhere. He's always there. But, but you know what? We all get to these points, to these situations, to these moments in our lives where we feel like we, we don't know where he is. We've, we've lost him somewhere along the way. It's not that he's lost. It's most probably that we're lost. But we've lost Jesus. 
you realize that you're, you're far away and you're not on this journey that you used to be on. And Jesus asks of us, please, follow me. But sometimes we lose our direction and one day you wake up and you realize that Jesus is lost. I think in the scriptures, you also find that the scriptures, it is very important to the, to the writers of the Bible to make sure that they give you the essence and the importance of following Jesus. They want to make sure that they don't give you more than what you need. They want to make sure that you get exactly what you need to know. And the reason why I say what you do on that day when you lose Jesus is that the scriptures actually speaks about the day where Jesus got lost. And I think if the scripture talks about that, then the scriptures must have a mission with it. To actually allow us into understanding something for us as followers of Jesus. And then the book of Luke 2, verse 41 to 52, we find that Luke writes about the day when Jesus got lost. Luke is known as a doctor. Luke is known as a very intellectual guy that wrote the book of Luke and also Acts. And he was a guy that was really to the point. He made sure that you got exactly what you needed. But you didn't get more or a lot of detail. But Luke decided to write this into his gospel. And therefore I think if Luke decides to write it, then we should most probably also look at this. The day when Jesus got lost. And uh, you can turn in your Bibles there, or you can look on your phone. I'm just going to read a few scriptures, and I'm going to throw up a few scriptures on the screen that you can follow with. Because I believe that God has really shared something to me in this last week about this. And uh, I need to share this with you today. And uh, I'm just going to start reading. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. And then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. When they did not, whoops, when they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. And I think my eye catches this verse firstly because, do you know what? Jesus' mom and dad went to Jerusalem with this idea of doing it like they've always done it. You see, the earlier verses actually tells us that they did it because that was the custom for them to do. They went to Jerusalem for the first time. They went because they've always done it. And I think when we feel far away from Jesus, maybe that's the place to start, is to ask yourself this question, aren't you just going through the motions maybe? Aren't you just going through the custom of just doing what you've always done? You're just going to church like always. And even though they were faithful and they were just carrying on and doing it, somewhere in that faithful doing the custom thing, somewhere among that all, Jesus got lost. And it's a scary thought for me because, because I'm thinking, you know, it can happen that we are just doing things because of custom. 
It didn't start off that way. No, it started off with a great relationship with Jesus. But then at some point we're just doing it because we're just doing it. But then the scripture says when they found that Jesus was lost, the Bible clearly says they went back to Jerusalem. But they went back with a different purpose. They didn't go back because of the custom. No, no, no. They went back to Jerusalem to look for him. See, when our worship team practice every week, when they gather, they work out songs, they check the flow and they pray about songs and they ask God for scriptures and, and they just intercede for a Sunday. And even with myself, you know why we do that? It's because we expect that when you come here, you don't do it out of custom. You come here looking for Him. You come here because it's nobody but Jesus that is important. It is all about Jesus. And sometimes we, we just get lost in the rhythm of this world. And we just get lost in the rhythm of our own traditions or our own way of thinking about it and our own customs. But Jesus says, well, the scripture tells us that when they went back, they went back with this idea they went back to look for him. And I believe that every single service, every single time that you read your Bible, every single time you're going to prayer, if you don't do it out of custom, if you do it in looking for him, then he, then he will fulfill that desire to look for him. Oh, first seek the kingdom of God. First seek the kingdom of God and all His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. He will give to you. Yes, when we follow Jesus, we've got to make sure, even in the times when we feel that He's far away, we've got to make sure that we don't do the things we do out of custom. We do it to look for Him and to pick up His heart. I want to read the next few verses. They went back, and after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. This is what his mother said. Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you for three days. Been anxiously searching for you. And then, Luke, he writes the first words, the first words that you will read that Jesus speaks. It's the first words in the book of Luke, the first time that Jesus will utter words and the first Words is so important because it lays the foundation of in everything else and it gives you a key about when it comes to following Jesus. And Jesus' response and his words was this. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Certain other translations would say it this way. It would say that, didn't you know that I would be with my father's business? I would be busy with what the father wants me to be busy with. I would be busy with whatever he wants me to do. See, whenever you feel like Jesus is far away and you're not sure, you can't, you're struggling to hear his voice and you're struggling in your journey and you're thinking, well, I should follow him, but I don't know where to find him. You know where you're going to find him? You're going to find him busy with the Father's business. 
You're going to find Him doing what the Father wants to do. Jesus, even later on in His ministry, He would even say these words. In John 5, Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can do only what He sees His Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. You see, when it comes to following Jesus, it is all about that Jesus, doing what Jesus did. And what Jesus did, you only had one thing. You only had one thing. And that was being about his father's business. You only had one thing and it was to do what the father was busy with. And in this verse, it says, Jesus, son of God, didn't do anything that he didn't see the father doing. If the Father did it, He will do it. But only then. See, and I think sometimes our problem is that we think we've got our own agendas. We've got our own feel of our responsibility. We've got our own way of looking at it. And, and rightfully so. I think Mary and Joseph they were chosen and God said, I want you to raise up this child. I want you to raise up Jesus. And, and therefore she could ask this question because she felt the weight of that responsibility. But actually Jesus says, well, you know what? If you're searching for me, you'll find me in one place. I will be busy with the Father's business. Jesus prays in John 17, which takes it even further. And he would say, Jesus said, Father, I have been faithful with those that you gave me. That's incredible. Because in actual fact, Jesus is saying, I didn't even choose them by myself. You gave them to me. The people that's in your life, the church that you're in, the places we're involved in, God has given that to you, the Father. And we should be busy with the Father's business. We should be busy with that, with the Father's business. What is the Father's business? Well, this is the Father's business. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His Son. The Father's business is His love for this world. The Father's business is transforming this world. The Father's business is to make sure that whoever believes will not perish. His heart is for all to be saved. And that's why God wants us to be involved in it. The Father's business has nothing to do with any other businesses. It's got everything to do with giving His own Son because of His love for people, because of His love for His creation. It's the Father's business. The Father's business is, is displayed again and should be a reminder for us as a church at the communion table. That is where we find. Again the father's heart and love. For the world. Is at the communion table. That in the night. When Jesus was arrested. He took the bread. And he broke it. And he said this is my body. 
take this in remembrance of my body being broken for you. And, and He gave the wine to His disciples and He said, drink this, this is my blood that, that was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins and for healing. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. And what you should remember is this, is that Jesus only had one thing. It was all about the Father's business. In that same night, Jesus prayed very intensely to the Father. He said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. It is the Father's business that we should all be about. And we've got communion tables here. And today I want to invite you as a family to, to partake in the communion tables in remembrance of what Jesus has done. To partake in the communion tables and now I really want to ask you this. I really want to ask you this. Don't partake in it because of the custom. Partake in it because you're looking for Him. And it's a moment where you can find Him again. So I want to invite you, if there's anybody that that is not able to get to the table, will you just please be so kind to just assist the person next to you? Or as a family, just go and partake in the communion table this morning as we gather. You're more than welcome. So this is what the Father shared with me, with me in this week. That we all sometimes get to these points where we feel that Jesus is far away. And all we need to do is to go back just go and figure out again where is the father busy and get involved in the father's business and communion today is a reminder of that a reminder of his commitment to you but on a practical level I want to say in due Victoria I believe that this is our sincerest desire and the absolute commitment of our hearts to be about the Father's business. For God so loved the world and therefore Dio Victoria will love the world. Therefore you will see a board, the board, 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 what, what would it in front with our missionaries. We've got missionaries in Kalmykia and Russia. We've got people that we support in India and we're supporting the underground church in China, the growing church movement in India and the slow and steady but faithful work in Kalmykia. We are busy in France, among the Islamic people, and we've also supported projects among the Indian people in America, in South America. In South Africa, we support different places, and even in our city. It is our true desire to be about the Father's business. Even in your castle, we want to be about the Father's business. And you will find that in the last few years, we've been having a, a missions conference and our next missions conference is coming up on the third weekend in September. Again, and every year, we ask people to commit, especially with a faith promise offering. 
that means it's not tithes it's not offerings it is a promise that you that you're trusting God for in faith that God will provide in a supernatural way that you can also be involved with the father's business and I believe church that when we get involved with the father's business I believe we're truly following Jesus and you will see in that foyer area there's a mission table there and Mariesa is there and I want to ask you even after the service if you if you uh, just want to make a turn there do that we've still got faith mission promise cards uh, and I want to ask you to become a part and be a part of what God is doing worldwide even for us as a church we should be busy with the father's business and I know I know that we're all worried about the world and we're worried about all the things that's happening I know that that we're all saying you know what I don't know if this world's got a last and I don't know and definitely yes Jesus is coming back for his bride but I know this I know that Jesus brings the answer to us if we just carry on following him and I want to say it in the words of T.D. Jakes and thank you Leon in the words of T.D. Jakes I want you to read these words Jesus comes walking on the very stuff that is about to drown you see when they were out at sea and Jesus came walking on the water in that moment where they thought when they saw Jesus they thought this is a ghost they thought we're going to drown they thought this is chaos this is the end but Jesus was faithfully busy with his mission he was just faithfully busy with the father's business and you know what the father does he knows what he wants to do in this world he knows that he wants to win this world and it doesn't matter if it looks like this world is gonna sink he comes walking on the very stuff that is about to drown you and he invites you he says come 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 he says come come you know what's going to happen I'm not just going to walk on the stuff the very stuff that's about to drown you I'm inviting you as you follow me and as we follow the father's business I'm inviting you to walk on the very stuff that you thought was about to drown you he says come come I am I am the miracle worker I am the promise keeper. Come. 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 My God, that is who He is. That is who you are. It doesn't matter what the business or the agenda is of the world. It doesn't matter what political leaders say doesn't matter what political parties with their agendas is it doesn't matter what what people's agendas are God the Father is busy the Son only did He only did what He saw the Father do and He invites you He invites you be a part come and walk on that same thing that you think is about to drown you that's the God that we serve